You see, in Russia we say if you got one choice, you know what that means? You got no fucking choice. Hockey was the most popular sport in the Soviet Union. From childhood, they picked out the best of the best of the best. It was politics, really. The game for them wasn't just the game, it was also propaganda. The movie is about the Soviet Union and the greatest uh, sports dynasty, arguably in history, the Red Army hockey team, and uh, the interrelationship between sport, politics, society and how they all kind of run parallel. Gabe Polsky is the filmmaker behind the critically acclaimed documentary, Red Army, which has just been released after a wildly successful festival run. The film is a gripping look at the rise and fall of the dominant Soviet hockey team through the eyes of one of the team's brightest stars. It's told from the perspective of the captain of the team, Slava Fetisov, national hero, and then became a political enemy. He's a man that you know fought for freedom and in a very oppressive system and helped kind of collapse the Soviet Union. And the rest of the world call us Red Machine or Red Army. But we were not a machine, we're not robots. Of course, you know, it's in the movie where we always fight against the communist system for the freedom for the freedom of choice, for the democracy, for the uh, people, right? And I, f and I feel this in my skin. Fetisov's decision to fight the restrictive and at times ruthless policies of the communist regime supplies the backbone of the film, culminating in the hockey star being given the first multiple entry work visa to the United States and opening the door for other Russian players to come to the West. Because, you know, it's, uh, the philosophy of the Iron Curtain was uh, uh, people cannot go and work outside of Soviet Union. I got American visa now. So I was the first uh, Soviet citizen who uh, got this uh, uh, privilege to work in the United States. So why did the Soviets pour so much energy and resources into their sports teams, fighting to keep their best players inside the system for so long? According to Polsky, it all stems from a very clear agenda at the heart of the Cold War. I think sports is an easy way to reach people. And I think the Soviet Union knew that. They knew that, you know, you can't fight a nuclear war against the United States. And, you know, they wanted to spread the Soviet ideology everywhere. And, and, and when you see your team winning all the time, people are going to start turning their heads and saying, what the hell is going on over there? Why are they so good? That must be... You know, their system must be somehow better. For the Soviets, sports were, in a way, a kind of warfare. The game for them wasn't just the game. It was also part of what you would call propaganda, actually, making it very clear that we're the best. And we're the best because of the Soviet system, because of socialism. That's why we're the best. But the Soviet sports system collapsed for the same reasons the communist government ultimately fell. Because at the core of any top-down system are individuals with their own goals and desires. You know, nobody uh, pushed myself to train four times a day because, you know, I like the communist uh, system and uh, support the revolution and shit like that. I mean, it's a uh, play because I love the game. I work four times a day because uh, I want to be number one in the world. That's the different philosophy. Red Army is playing in theaters now.